I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to put down a couple of single electric fields, and hopefully that'll trigger Battle Beat. I don't know. I need Fumble or Battle Beat. Either way. Here we go. Double crit damage. Just shredding Mist Monsters. Whoo! Look at that go. Look at that go. That's actually really strong. Whoa. Double crit damage. Totally rocking out. I am a fan. Oh, my God. Extra credit on this guy. Whoa. Wow. That was extremely satisfying. I, you know, I gotta say, I'm starting to like the changes I made to this weapon. Hello, so we got an interesting video today because the shooting star, along with all of the invasion weapons, just got buffed. And I've already shown the discharger in the MSK video. I'll link that down below. I already ran it in the 160s, so that video should be out before this one. So link to that down below. And I tried to make a third rail video. This weapon is insanely good. Here's a clip of it one-shotting a smasher with a suboptimal loadout. It's really, really strong when it works. You're now probably seeing footage of it not doing any damage i had to scrap an entire recording of this weapon because it just didn't work i don't know what the bug is maybe somebody has a concrete way to make sure it works every single time but until this weapon is consistent i can't really make a video on the third rail so i put a poll to chat you know twitch link down below if you guys ever want to be a part of these and they chose the shooting star over the pulse pounder so let's talk about the changes to this weapon first and foremost you can no longer get mag size perks on it which is great because it has infinite infinite mag size but you can still get not only reload but double reload on this weapon i don't know man but there's a new indicator of it overheating and it should last for a bit longer before it overheats so yeah i crafted two of these because i kind of want to use two pulse pounders and switch off between them while they overheat and i'm going to be using a very basic soldier build i don't want to use totally rocking out with this because it'd be a super glass cannon build so we're just using ramirez blast in the past hide might mad tidings actually because typically i use like assault ammo recovery or chaos agent but this weapon does reload and then because it doesn't reload we can't use locked and reloaded so mad tidings should work for this uh, decently enough assault crit damage of course and coconuts for damage and health because it's a very very standard smg loadout let's hop in game and see what it can do all right so before i shoot at this smasher one of the changes was that it did slightly less damage to enemies because of the new overheating time and that is very very nice we could not finish off a smasher in the previous video i'll link down below if you guys want to see it you also do a lot more environmental damage which is actually really great because when you charge up this beam, you'll see right here that you're kind of stuck shooting it. And to just eliminate everything in front of you, it means that you can just sort of stay in the fight for longer. You can get the, the Ben's Warcry going, and it just makes you a little bit more useful in the fight. And that is really good. Damn it. I, I, you know what? It felt like it overheated way too fast before, but especially switching between the two of these, that is a super comfortable amount of time to be firing. Let me just use one copy so I know I'm not like kind of biased here. Yeah, waiting for that cooldown is significant. That was my first experience when the weapon first came out. I was just using it as the one. And if you're not switching off, I'm going to be making full use of crack shot. So this build with crack shot in the lead and only one copy could be very viable, but I'm thinking switching between two of these is kind of the way to go. I think that's definitely the more uh, convenient way to run it. But of course, if I don't absolutely have to switch, I might as well. Crackshot is in support after all, and a 50% damage bonus is certainly nothing to scoff at. So I'm going to, while I'm switching, switch to my other copy here and hopefully not die while I'm shooting at these mist monsters. I want to get as much use out of that as possible. In fact, I might even allow it to overheat because I don't think uh, it's going to be a big deal if it overheats. I haven't seen it happen yet. In fact, I've been ending the firing very close to that red line. Yeah, it looks like it actually overheats a little later than I thought. So you can get pretty good use out of this with some practice. And so far, I'm impressed. This weapon could not eliminate an encampment before. And I know I wasn't dual wielding it, but this is just eliminating enemies with ease. I've talked about this in previous recordings where if I don't have to think about the gameplay, then you know the weapon's doing a great job. And that is uh, definitely what we're seeing here. In fact, if, even if I want to make more use out of this ammo, I could just aim for the head and just do even more. That's really, really nice. I'm very well impressed with what they've done with this weapon. All right, we got another smasher. Probably the last one before the defense begins. I think we've definitely seen what this weapon has to offer. With that freezing six perk... Look at that. You, you, I didn't quite get it this time, but you can just stall it in place until it's dead. That is really, really useful. All right, the defense begins. Let's see what we can do with here. So I'm not really just looking for big targets. I want to see 
normal enemies as well. And this is where that slow perk, you can see the shackles on their legs, can really come into play. It's not slowed and snared, by the way. In case anybody was curious, I didn't explain that in this video, but I've talked about it in the past. Slowed and snared is not the slowed six perk. Um, it's different. It's not the same thing. If you wanted to take advantage of that, you'd probably want to do damage to frozen enemies, but that only kicks in after 10 shots. And you can see these 250 power level ones are way sturdier, but I collected a lot of coconuts, so I should stay on top of eating them. Also, that was elemental. I don't think I uh, attacked any elemental smashers before, but look at that. It's not quite Zenith, you know, link to that video down below, but it's pretty good. Like, this weapon fires fast enough where you can essentially just be on duty, focusing on the big targets, and you just freeze them, completely freeze them in place. That is a really nice bonus. That's, uh, that's not too bad at all. It's not doing as much damage as it was before, of course, because these are much, much higher enemies, but uh, it's still holding up fairly well. Like, look, oh my god, there's a smasher coming towards our defenses, and he's frozen. He's just completely frozen. In fact, I got all the time in the world to just wait for uh, it to cool down. That way I can come back with crack shot and just keep doing more and more and more damage. As I mentioned earlier, I am resetting my damage every time I switch. So I'm just going to do that right now. Eat a coconut. And it's a weird trade-off because the coconut gives me health. That's why I did that. But it also gives me a damage bonus, which is less than I just lost from crack shot. But it gets me back in the fight. So, you know, just using this build to its full potential is uh, kind of important. And there are lots of different builds with this weapon. In fact, a part of me wants to try a double crit damage, totally rocking out version. So that might happen later on in this video. I, uh, I don't know what else there is to show here. So I guess I'll just tune in when we see the big targets so that this video doesn't end up being 30 minutes long like it sometimes gets. Oh, look at that. We got a mist monster. Easy freeze in place. I think that's my favorite part about this weapon. The, the freezing six perk is not unique to this weapon, but the shooting star and maybe the pulse pounder AR are really the only two invasion weapons that can take advantage of it. Like the discharger, sure, it can hit an enemy lots of times, slow them in place, but usually they're dead by the time they're frozen, which I am not knocking it for that. But I feel like the Shooting Star is the only weapon in the invasion set that can really take advantage of that freezing, and it is really nice, because as long as an enemy survives, look, it's a taker, and it's frozen. It's basically just waiting to die at that point. That's a really, really strong bonus, and I'm pleasantly surprised with it. So yeah, it makes this weapon really satisfying to run. You basically have Zenith built in. Super good. All right, so I'm here in Takers. Ah, I'm here in Flingers. Let's see what we can do against the Flingers. Uh, that's not a Flinger, but... There we go. Just aim for the head. How much more damage does a headshot do? I'm personally curious. We're going to check in the middle of the recording here. Uh, 37k instead of 25k. So that's roughly a 50% damage bonus just by aiming for the head. So a very strong bonus indeed. But look at that discharger. Oh, wow. It didn't kill. I'm honestly, nah, I'm not surprised. Sometimes it doesn't zap that many times when it's just rolling through enemies. But look at this. Hip fire. Hip fire. It's a laser beam. This weapon is so convenient to run. It, it, there's no bloom. There's no spray. You just point the dot where you want it to go and it's got pretty good distance like the the damage drop off is pretty significant but uh it'll still freeze and i've mentioned enough about the freezing so one thing i have not addressed is the fact that this is a let's see how fast is this thing firing 13.5 energy cells per second so you know I would argue, believe it or not, that this has been more expensive for me to record than the Discharger. And the Discharger, it got nerfed to where it now costs 30 energy cells per shot instead of three. I think we all expected that. But this weapon is chewing through ammo way, way faster. And uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I'm going to find some big targets and tune in with you then. Oh, look, a propane. Oh, no, I hope he doesn't get too close. Whatever shall I do? Freeze him in place and then just watch him die. Just watch him die. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh, okay, got him. Got him. This is so good. I don't want to lose my health. Ah, coconuts and crack shot. Not a great combo. Uh, I've, I've made a bunch of crack shot videos. I'm not going to bother linking them all down below. Maybe I will. We'll see what Editing Beast is in the mood for, but I will link them all down below. I just won't put them on screen, maybe. But my point is, crack shot in all those builds, I don't use wafers or coconuts intentionally because you don't want to switch off your weapon. So right now, I'm, I'm making the balance. Like, do I eat the coconuts for health that I kind of don't need right now, or do I keep crack shot available? The, the real answer is it doesn't matter. There are no enemies here that really require my attention. So once again, I'll tune in if we see something big. You know what? Seconds after recording that clip, I realized that we have a mini boss coming in. So yeah, I guess there's my big target. All right, I'm gonna switch off between these because I feel like waiting for the cooldown is not what you wanna do. And this is incredibly expensive, but Decently effective? I'm gonna get hit with a propane. I don't know what to think. It's strong, but 
I feel like that's mostly fire rate rather than real damage because uh, this mini boss is not going down that fast. It wouldn't be faster with the discharger though because that weapon is uh, very, very good crowd clearing, but single target, it varies. Against mini bosses, it tends to do pretty poorly, but look at that damage. It's actually doing good. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Yeah, I'm trying not to stand in the acid pools, understandably, but that was not too bad. Sure, we have traps going on and Sweetie P and quasi spamming bits with a hype train about to start. Thank you guys so much. Double 420 bits. Those two are so cute. You know, I'm, I'm immortalizing this in a YouTube video. These two are a couple right now watching my streams. I say right now. I'm optimistic, but you know, I'm not a mind. I'm not, I'm not a future reader. Right now, they're a couple who watch the stream and they donate together. It is the cutest thing. Uh, in between clips earlier, after my third rail video failed and I, I couldn't record anything, these two synced up 10,000 bit donations, which totaled 250. Then Quasi came with another 10K. I don't have words for that. Nobody is ever required or even expected to donate on my streams, but when it happens, it is not lost on me. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. And I'm saying that on a YouTube video, so you guys can uh, can always have my gratitude. I, I really, it, it goes a long way. It really, really does. And uh, what also goes a long way is buffing a weapon like this. And I'm really enjoying this. I think the, the shooting star is, Still in need of some perks, like the fact that it doesn't have a heat capacity perk. I should have mentioned that early on in the video, but it doesn't have a heat capacity perk and it doesn't have a cooling rate perk. It needs that as a heat capacity weapon. The fact that it still has reload tells me that this weapon is still not quite done. Damage wise though, I think it's fair. Very expensive energy cell wise, but so is the lightning pistol and that weapon's amazing too. So yeah, I think this weapon's in a good spot. It needs some better perks, but uh, I like what they've done. Benz, I'll save you. I don't want him to die with the mission ending in two seconds. Yeah, I have had a lot of fun with this weapon. I'm going to set up a totally rocking out build and I'll check in with you then. If you're wondering why I'm a cat, it's because Twitch stream was having fun, but I think it just ended. So I'm back. We're going to be running the shooting star double crit damage. 5% chance to crit is not much, but 545% crit damage is definitely nice. So let's check out the build. I, like I said, would love to run Crack Shot in the lead, but I want to switch between these two. So I'm going to be running Sludge in the lead, totally rocking out, Battle Beat Fumble, again, no wafers, no coconuts, Mad Tidings, because like I said, there aren't that many ways to buff this weapon, Assault Damage, because it's a great perk, because we want to get that 70%. It's also a bit better than like uh, Ranger Deadeye in support, because Rescue Trooper Ramirez has higher total stats, so she should be buffing me just a bit more. And then Resident Frequency. I'm going to tell you now, I'm probably never going to have shields in this build. I'm going to be in the fight, taking damage it's gonna be awful but i want to use it because 20 percent extra damage makes me feel good i know it's gonna be barely any damage but i i want to do it so that's about it uh, i'm gonna get in game here and uh, we'll see what it does all right we're in game but i'm gonna do something a little tricky i'm gonna put down a couple of seeing electric fields and hopefully that'll trigger battle beat i don't know i need fumble or battle beat either way here we go double crit damage just shredding mist monsters Whew, look at that go Look at that go! That's actually really strong. Whoa! Double crit damage, totally rocking out. I am a fan. Oh my god, extra credit on this guy. <laughs> wow! That was extremely satisfying. I, you know, I gotta say, I'm starting to like the changes I made to this weapon. All right, we got some crow bullying, just flexing the accuracy. Oh my god, it dropped a fumble. All right, here we go, here we go. That was not intentional, but we're gonna take advantage of it. Here we go. All right, fumble ball. Eliminates the Mist Monster, easy peasy. All the enemies are running up here. That's fine. We'll switch to a different target. We got to keep the kills going to get Battle Beat active, but it doesn't even matter. Wow, they're just all dead. I know there are a couple of stragglers over here, but unless we find a big target, I might just head over to the defense. All right, so I don't have Totally Rocking Out active or any way to activate it. So this could be tricky. Unless I get lucky with a Fumble Football, I'm not really sure how to use Totally Rocking Out on this thing. But I still wanted to run up to a Smasher and bullied it anyway, because I, you know, I just can't ignore Smasher. Ah! Okay, definitely not going to have Rio either. All right, no luck on the footballs, but oh, man, it's frozen and I'm dead. You know what? I'm going to take that as a sign and just go to the defense. Just kidding. I'm going to waste my one revive on this pointless Smasher kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Critting 5% of the time isn't anything to write home about, but this is a really great way to just demonstrate how strong that freeze perk is. If you have an unlimited energy cell budget, it's a really good six perk. 
All right, the defense has begun. So I got a few electric fields right there, over there, and over there. All of this are my teammates just not wanting to farm. Dense, I swear, was saving those bits just for the recording. But with Tony Rocket out active, 250 power level smasher, freezing it in place. Okay, not as fast of a kill as I thought. But remember, I didn't have crack shot built up. So I'm going to store this energy and look for another smasher. I want to bully all these zombies, but what's the point? I'm just blowing electric fields for or electric or um, energy. Oh, my God. Not electric fields. Energy cells for. Oh, my God. What a casual kill. I, I wanted to move on with what I was saying. But look at that damage. Even from back here. We're going to freeze it in place. Okay. Walk over to the fumble. Keep crack shot active. Damn. That's a really good kill speed. That's. That's as fast as that should be. Freezes it in place while I wait for the cooldown. And like I said, I am never going to have Rio active because I am going to take so much damage. Yeah, I was going to let the electric fields finish him off if I couldn't. Now, I'm going to abandon crack shot or not. It died before I could abandon crack shot. Look at the accuracy on this weapon, though. This is me being a terrible shot, by the way. But you can actually shoot right through these little slits if you can actually shoot the shots. But look at that. Pretty good. Wow. Wow, double crit damage. I don't know if I'm like recommending this exactly, but it goes a long way. Look at the range on this weapon too. Freezing it from that far. Like I said, it's like an SMG Zenith. This weapon might be a new favorite of mine. Um, again, it's expensive. I, I can't do this every single game. You can probably see my energy cell count down there is down to 1700, which is not very much. I'm pretty sure I crafted up to 3K shortly prior to recording this, or I at least did earlier in the day. So I, yeah, Ben's Warcry. I, uh, I think I started at 3K at some point, but you know, for the odd fun, I think this is perfectly fine. If you guys haven't checked out my fun 160s playlist, you'll know that I have lots and lots and lots of fun builds that are not nearly as expensive as this one. Some are, looking at you, crack shot de-atomizer, but not everything is super expensive. So this is a, a fun way to uh, switch things up. And I'm personally just extremely much, that's not, that's terrible English. I am extremely enjoying, okay, whatever, this new update. You know, just using a weapon that wasn't in the game before is, has made me so excited that my brain had just died no the real story behind that by the way and any minor mistakes i've made is because this update came out at 5 a.m and i was awake for it <sighs> and i was so excited to stream that i got about three hours of sleep so my brain is just struggling right now and i have no electric fields over here you can see the difference without totally rocking out active it's bad so i'm actually gonna put the weapons away real quick and just put a few of these down it doesn't need to be a lot just enough to consistently get battle beat i'm probably gonna die on the way here yeah those uh those beehives are terrible but once those are activating battle beat we should be doing a lot more damage dimension my hero all right you can see the totally rocking out is not active oh come on give me a break here all right we got the flinger dead easy peasy just work on these enemies. If this if this weapon at this fire rate had affliction, that would be so much damage, but it doesn't. That's fine. You know what I should have done? Instead of placing it here above these crowds, I should have put it down here where they're running up, but it's all right. It's all right. Little hot tip, by the way. If you're watching this as of recording, we are currently in a water, okay, water season. So electric fields, uh, power level 130 nature will do more than your supercharged energy ones. And that is an important thing to know. So right now, I don't even have energy electric fields uh, crafted on hand. It's all nature because they'll just do more damage against the normal, uh, against the water enemies. And energy and nature will do the exact same amount against normal non-elemental enemies. So yeah, nature seeing electric fields are definitely in right now. They are exactly what you want. So there's a little hot tip for you guys. There you go. I'm currently solving my totally rocking out problem and i'm just gonna do that by spawn trapping with three electric fields bit of an expensive mission but you know what i'm already burning through 13 and a half energy cells a second what's a few electric fields just to make sure totally rocking out is active uh the, typically the traditional way to activate it would be of course wafers but as mentioned switching off a of crack shot is suboptimal but you can also see that i'm switching between my weapons pretty often so maybe instead of crack shot i should have just done like wukong or something that way i don't have to worry about it then i can run wafers and it's a lot more consistent but you know what that's the fun of these builds it's not a guide video i'm not trying to show you this as though it's the best shooting star build possible if you guys want to tweak and learn from my mistakes you go right ahead you know i i make mistakes it happens sometimes i'll call myself out i made a minigun loadout for this season adventures link down below the whole premise of that build was using Banshee to buff your war cry and minigun and make you do more damage. Well, something I routinely forget is that minigun doesn't get buffed by war cry. Yeah, it does zero extra damage from war cry. It's all fire rate. So 
Yeah. Oops. My bad. I mean, it's still a better build than like normal, but yeah. Ricochet mini boss. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that's going to complicate things. We're going to have to do a few things. We're going to get four of these down. We're going to get a couple of campfires and we're going to make this happen. Ricochet has nothing on me, especially if it's literally... Ah! Okay. It was doing no damage, okay? It wasn't doing any ricochet damage. It's a bug that happens sometimes. So feeling safe, I decided, all right, I'm just going to lay into it. The and then I was dead before I could react. So, all right, we're going to watch the health. We're going to stand on the on the healing pad. There we go. Yeah, see, we're fighting it. We're fighting the power. Supercharge healing pads and campfires is all we need. And I don't know why I keep switching because I wasn't about to overheat, but easy mini boss ricochet ricochet doesn't mean anything if you have you know enough healing stuff on the ground fun fact they actually nerfed campfires i believe because of ricochet mini bosses so you used to be able to heal from as many at once as possible now you are capped at two sometimes i put down more than two and that's because when they are healing you the time in between the ticks of healing you can get healed for like a third and maybe a fourth time, but it's a little tricky to get the timing right. So what used to happen was I'll link a I'll show just in the corner of the video here a really old video, really, really, really old. It's the old blaster as well shooting me where I used 16 campfires because they actually have a three by three radius. So by standing in the perfect corner between four of them, you can get healed by 16 at a time. And that's still true to this day. You just won't actually get the healing from all of them at once. So nowadays, if I ever put down two campfires, maybe three or four you understand why but back in the day you used to put down literally five six seven of these with a ricochet mini boss and it didn't even matter you'd be healing so fast from those campfires that the mini boss had no chance so to this day epic hasn't stated a reason on why they nerfed campfires quietly but i'm like 99 percent sure that's why so there's a little bit of fortnite lore for you uh, a little bit of knowledge about the the campfires and such and something that somebody commented recently i don't remember your name i'm sorry i'd I know you if i saw it but they didn't know that you can heal from up here i don't know how to take damn oh there we go yeah so you can actually heal from the campfire if you look in the bottom left my my health is actually ticking up that's from the campfire and uh you can put that underneath your defenders to just make them heal better and you can box in the campfire to make it a little bit safer so it doesn't get destroyed nice little hot tip you know this is meant to be a video about the shooting star not the best ways to heal in fortnite but is that a video i don't know it'd just be a tutorial on vouchering <laughs> It'd just be a tutorial, you can't voucher him, on researching Crossbones Barrett and using coconuts. But, hey, you know what? These are important things to know that you might have overlooked. And if you're wondering why I supercharge these, it's because you heal more. So, yeah. Does this still display as 130? No, I think they fixed this. Because Cozy Campfire's supercharge used to be 130 visually. But then I'm pretty sure it was still healing you for 130. But now it's 144. Looks good to me. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Let me know what you thought. Uh, go get some ice cream and have a nice day. In that order. And then...